Welcome to the last of three videos in a mini-series on the functional deficits associated with cerebral territory strokes. In this video, we will be focusing on the posterior cerebral artery, the PCA. PCA strokes are relatively rare and account for just up to 10% of all strokes. To work out the likely symptoms, you first again need to know the distribution of the artery in question, in this case the posterior cerebral artery, and secondly know the function of the areas of the brain it supplies. We'll begin by talking about the anatomy of the PCA. As you can see here, it arises from the posterior part of the circle of Willis on the inferior aspect of the brain, where they form the terminal branches of the basilar artery. Early in its course, the PCA gives off a deep branch to the thalamus and part of the midbrain. The PCA then runs posteriorly along the inferior aspect of the brain, giving off a number of superficial branches to the occipital lobe, splenium of the corpus callosum, inferior aspect of the temporal lobe, and parts of the parietal lobe. However, there's a large degree of anatomical variation. That summarises the anatomy of the posterior cerebral artery. Now we'll move on to talk about the function of the areas of the brain it supplies. The thalamus is an important relay centre for ascending and descending tracts between the cortex and the body. The splenium of the corpus callosum carries fibres between the two occipital lobes. The occipital lobe contains the primary and association visual areas, which are important in the sensation and perception of visual stimuli. To revise this, watch our video on visual pathway lesions and field defects. Now we can piece this information together to predict the symptoms of a PCA stroke. The content already covered should have given you enough knowledge to work out what the likely symptoms are, given that you know the location of the infarct. Firstly though, it should be mentioned that PCA strokes can present with more generalised symptoms, including headache, dizziness and confusion. Now I'll go through some of the possible symptoms of PCA stroke, but remember, not all strokes present as they do in the textbook. One of the most common symptoms of a PCA stroke is a visual field defect, and this is contralateral homonymous hemianopia. This image may depict the pattern of visual loss in a patient who has suffered a PCA stroke. If the thalamus is involved, the patient may have contralateral sensory deficits, which occurs in up to a half of patients. Motor symptoms are less common. If the splenium of the corpus callosum is involved, the patient may present with alexia without agraphia which means patients can write but cannot read. This represents a deficit in communication between the two occipital lobes. To summarise, the symptoms of a PCA stroke will depend on the structures involved, but may manifest as contralateral homonymous hemianopia, contralateral sensory disturbance, alexia without agraphia, and more generalised symptoms such as headache, dizziness and confusion. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.